All right, folks, welcome to the Monsters, Madness, and Magic podcast. I'm your host, Justin, here with a quick word before we dive in. Now, in this episode, I chat with actor and martial artist Ty Mock about kung fu flicks, becoming Bruce Leroy, Julius Carey, mental training, and spiritual experiences. As always, thank you all for listening out there. And if you're listening on your podcasting platform of choice, please leave us a review. And if you happen to be watching the video on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe because it does help. Anyway, without further ado, here you go. All right, Ty (laughs) Mock, take us back in time. You're a youngster. Are you a book reader, fort builder, troublemaker, or all the above? Oh my God, I'm a fort builder. <laughs> ah. And then, then, then I guess trouble, yeah. But uh, I was pretty uh, at training, 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 and that type of thing, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So where did you grow up? Did you grow up in New York? I grew up in the, my, my father's, um, you know, he was, and my mother was from here, but but they wanted to experience living in Europe. My mother did actually. And um, we ended up going out to Europe when I was seven. So uh, I think we came back and went back out, but we started with London and then we ended up in Italy. I'm half Italian. So we spent about seven years in Europe when I was a kid until I was about 14. Wow. So would you say it was a, a culture shock coming back to the States? definitely i had a cockney accent you know yeah you know, i was getting a lot of fights in the in the, in the playground with you know the kids <laughs> you know yeah i was talking with a cockney accent yeah i had to get rid of it because they were making fun of me you know junior high school so what about your parents were either of them uh you know involved in the business or martial arts at all is that where you think you got your roots from uh my father um he Grew up in kind of a tough, you know, and, and it was uh, at that time, it was called Italian Hall, and it's Spanish Hall now, 116th Street and Pleasant Avenue. His parents were from Naples in a small, in that area, but it's really in the area that's about 60,000 people, and even less when he was there, uh, when his parents came from there, uh, called Benevento. My father actually was uh, a singer. Uh, enthusiast, but also he would practice with other cats in Harlem, and he got recognized. And when he was 19 or 20, similar when I got the last dragon, he they they wanted him to be a big star. So um, they had him sing six songs, which he didn't really like most of them, <laughs> uh, because at that point, at that time. He was trying to sing more hip style and they wanted more old fashioned style. And yeah. that was born to, as a young guy, it was born. So he um, had a hit song called Teenager for President. But his stint in, in, in that kind of game, uh, you, Hollywood, would you, you, know, you might say, was short lived because my father, you know, had, had my mother, had my brother, then me, and then the uh, and my two sisters came after that. So, when did you start training in martial arts, and was it was it bully related? Is that why you started training? I had bullying, but my father wanted wanted my brother and I to get into martial arts because when he was a kid, he was a good looking guy, and they would pick on him a lot, and he would get in a lot of fights. So he didn't want that to happen to me, and my brother. So he put us in martial arts and it stuck more with me. We started when we were really little. Uh, then we stopped and started again later when we came back to America. Yeah, my brother didn't want to do it anymore, but it, it, you know, I had passion for it, especially since I, I saw Bruce Lee. That kind of ignited everything. What did you start with? We started with karate with a, a master Gerald Orange. He was a goju karate. And then we, I came back and got into a community center, and they had a, a Aikido class in this community center. So I started doing that. Uh, I really liked the instructor Ralph King, but it there weren't kicks, you know. And I was looking to have some exciting. So I left that place after I, I don't know maybe about eight months, and then went into Taekwondo. 
Mm. And I competed in Taekwondo. I loved it. And, you know, just kicking, kicking, kicking. That was everything. And then I got with Ron Van Cleef because I was uh, wanting to get more into defending myself in the street. And he was well known in New York for being, at that time, a bouncer and a former military guy, very tough. <clears throat> so I trained with him. And then on uh, other days, I would go to a kickboxing studio way out in Queens. They didn't have any uh, back then. This is in the 80s, you know. Uh, and it was a small little gym that I trained and people like... Um, Zeb Judah's father, Yoel Judah, Zeb Judah, former bot. Well, yeah, he's famous for being a, was it welterweight? Yeah, um, boxing champion. Mm. Uh, his father was a kickboxing champion. So he used to come there and other guys like that. But it was it was really for the teacher there. So that was in Queens. Um, so then, yeah, give you a broad perspective how it was like for me. Yeah, man. So I did both. both. Yeah. Yeah. So when you think back to uh, formative films and TV shows that you grew up on, what pops into your head? Oh, I was a, a superhero uh, fanatic. So I would come back home from school and watch Batman, Spider-Man, and uh, Superman. Mm. Yeah. So I was a fanatic. And that's in my whole fantasy of my, you know, my world was all about that that was like training and you know <laughs> fantasy. Yeah, yeah, I think it wasn't video games back then, so it, that wasn't a thing. So um it was basically yeah. And then Muhammad Ali when you watch him boxing and stuff like that. Safe to say that you were a Kung Fu fan as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I would leave school also and I would go to these Kung Fu uh movie theaters on 42nd Street which was a really horrible block. They had, uh, you know, a lot of they had gang members, they had heroin addicts, and they had porn movies and, and uh, martial arts movies. And I was too young to get into porn movies, and it was kind of scummy in there anyway. Yeah. So I went to martial arts, I went to the martial arts uh, movies, and it was like really cheap, like 2 or $3. You could watch two movies, sometimes three. It was crazy. The good stuff. I, I grew up on all the uh, dubbed, English dubbed uh, Jackie Chan yeah. movies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Rumble in the Bronx. I was, uh, before he became real big, it was really the Shaw Brothers, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, all the Shaw Brothers movies. And that's what it was playing a lot in those theaters. Chow the Young Jackie Fat. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. All those guys, Master Killer. Yeah, all, all of them. Yeah, it was amazing. Five Deadly Venoms, right? Oh, yeah. was uh so was the uh the last dragon was that your very first time acting more or less i you know in school there were some school plays that i participated in but i wasn't pursuing acting and that was the first experience and uh, i would play a lead role in a major motion picture <laughs> Damn. right out of, right out of right out of high school yeah so can you take us through like how the uh, opportunity happened? Do you were, did you get called up for an audition? How did that go? Yeah, so you you know my life. I'm you know running around New York City as a kid. And training is everything. Uh, when I was 18, I won a New York State kickboxing title, and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And like a lot of teenagers, and uh, you know there wasn't any internet, so you had to kind of go word of mouth and. You know, my father always had me working with him. He he um, was a very uh, creative artist, and he, he sold all kinds of things. And anyway, uh, all the kids in the com com competition scene were telling me about this film, uh, The Last Dragon. And at that time, they didn't have any uh, leading black males in a major motion picture, young that's really uh, playing like a superhero, that was gonna be a real positive um, thing, you know? I was in the, all the kids were telling me about that, that this film, you know, there was no uh, leading black male, young, uh, kind of leading, leading role in an action film uh, that nobody had seen anything like that. They, 
Um, at that time, and right before that, you had Eddie Murphy and um, doing SNL, and then he ended up getting in films. It was all comedy. And then Denzel Washington, he did a part in TV show, St. Elsewhere, and then he was getting parts in other films, but not not an action star. Um, so, you know, it was a big deal. Sorry for the noise, by the way. I had to have some laundry in there. Don't worry anyway, about it, man. <laughs> so um, I ended up finding out how to get an audition. And long story short, when I went in there, I did horrible because I expected it to be like a martial arts, uh, uh, you know, perform a kata, do moves and ask questions. But they didn't want any of that. They just wanted to see if you can uh, act a scene out. Mm-hmm. So I was over there with my karate gi, and they told me to sit down and look at this script. It was a, they call it size, which is like a scene or two out of the script. So I saw other guys like my character sitting down reading this, and I was like, oh, I'm going to do that too. Sat down, couldn't make out what the hell this was about. I was totally out of my element. I went in there and I did terrible and they sent me home. I was so, I got my hopes up and I got so upset. And at that time, my father was, he was like, what are you snobbing? What are you whining about? You know, uh, listen, tell your friend, we're going to go down to Miami and we're going to be there for a while. So we need, they're going to drive down there. So we drove down there on the way down there. My father was like telling me to go over the scene and he was whacking me on my head. My friend was sitting in the middle of the van and he's like what the hell you say? don't you get the character he's he doesn't talk like normal he's you know he's he thinks he's like living in hong kong china or something and i, and I just couldn't but so by the time we get to miami my father says okay get out take out the stuff and and come inside so we took out the stuff in the back and i was really in a bad mood my friend looked at me and said man you're right and i said no i don't even care anymore i don't want anything to do with this and that's it for me. And he goes, well, if there's a God, God on earth, that role was written for you. And I, and it kind of let a sparkle in my eye. And I, I knew it uh, in my gut. He was right. So we were cleaning roofs up there from, and getting paid by father. And uh, we were goofing around. We'd go to the beach, chase girls. And, uh, <laughs> and we were just having a lot of fun, goofing around, playing around with the scene. By the time we got back to New York, they told me they already got the guy who's going to play the, the role. So I was upset but I because I worked a lot on it. So I went back to the casting office, and they asked, the, the guy opened the door, he looked like, oh, my God, him again. <laughs> and I was like, you know, pleading him for them just to let me go over the scene with him. And he let me do it just to get rid of me, you know. But halfway through, he stopped what he was doing and he had me face him and read it again. And then he hung up, he picked up the phone, told me to stop, called the production office. Long story short, they fired the guy that we're going to hire because he didn't sign the contract yet. And I got hired. That's how I got the role. Wow. Do you think it was, did you ever get any reason as to why they, I was the right person. (laughs) They fired the other guy. I mean, they just saw you and that was it. Well, they saw me twice. Yeah. You know, first time it wasn't, you know. Were they looking for someone specifically that had some training? Yeah, they would prefer that, but they wanted somebody to carry the whole film. Mm. So it was like, if he was a good actor and he didn't know how to do moves, it was not good. If he just knew how to do moves, couldn't act at all. Like, I wasn't no trained actor. I was just off the streets, but they knew that I could carry the role because uh, my character is, um, yeah, they just thought I'd, I'd do a great job. Right. And you did, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Did you perform when you could? Did you perform most of the stunts yourself? When I could, you know, I, I broke my shoulder and in and, and wrestling, I had a torn muscle and then it worked, got worse. So I couldn't do everything, but most of the stuff, yeah. So uh, while we're on the subject of The Last Dragon, I just got to ask you about, uh, Mr. Julius Carey, uh, he passed several yeah. years ago. I just wanted to ask, you know, if you got any memories you could share of him. Yeah, a bunch. He was just, what was a lot of fun about him is 
he would stay in character and I didn't know any, I didn't know anything about staying in character yeah. like you know when I would finish the scene I would just go back act my you know normal I wouldn't speak like I do not wish to and all that I wouldn't talk but um, but he would stay in character and walk around the set and and he would you know have his flunkies with him his groupies and start messing with people and I'd be cracking up and he used to start fights with me and he didn't know how to fight. He didn't know how to fight. <laughs> so uh, he used to get me really upset. He got me upset one time, and I ended up, you know, telling him to stop. And he got in my face, and he saw that I I was gonna about about I was really getting angry. I wanted to kick his ass, and he ran, and I was chasing him around, <laughs> and they they were screaming time out, stop because they thought I was really gonna try and hit him, uh, because it because <laughs> he really got me angry, but he wanted that. He, he didn't want us to be too friendly because, you know, we liked each other, but he didn't want that to happen. You know, That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So when did you realize, you know, after the movie is over and all, when did you realize just how popular it was? Well, when I, you know, when I knew this role was being cast and I got a sense of it, I knew it was going to do really well because I was a, I knew martial arts films. I knew that genre better than anybody you know and i knew it was going to do really well i just didn't know here we are 40 years later almost since shooting the movie and and uh yeah who would have known that everywhere anywhere i go it's the same thing any country people it, it's a universal type of experience yeah just a great movie man i i grew up watching that with my grandpa it's just one of those things and even when that song comes on, you already know it's time. It's, <laughs> it's a great yeah, song. Too. People, people tell me everywhere I go, you know, how they continue to watch it because it makes them feel really good. And, you know, the, the dialogue, everything. They, they just, yeah. And then uh, in November in New York, they're going to have a, we were shot it four year, 40 years ago. So, but next year is the 40th anniversary from when it was, actually came out in the theaters, yeah. but uh, a guy named Demetrius Angelo, he's got a, a, a film festival he does every year called Urban Action Showcase. And in November, the beginning, beginning of November, he's going to have a 40th anniversary uh, celebration of The Last Dragon in New York here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have any kids yourself? Do they know that their dad's Bruce Leroy? <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately... The two relationships I thought I was going to have kids it didn't work out when I was younger. Uh, I was not quite ready, and uh, I've been thinking about that lately. You know, oh, everybody's like, "Man, don't worry about it. You can, you can still have them, but take a break." Yeah, you're still young. You got time, man. <laughs> a lot of guys, a lot of guys, are like, "Oh man, it's, it's a lot of work." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But 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 I love kids, man. I love kids. Kids are great. Yeah. yeah, my wife's a teacher, so that kind of keeps me keeps her from pressuring me. You know, she got thirty at the class. Right? <laughs> yeah. Wow! Amazing. So you've gone on, you know, had plenty of roles in television and film. I wanted to ask you, you know, outside of the, of course, the pay and such, but do you have a preference between the two when it comes to working? Do you prefer to work theater to or work? film? Yeah, you know, I love theater. I mean, I really love it a lot. Um, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I'd say maybe I love theater more, but there's something about when you do film and you could see it afterwards. You know, it, it, they both have their pros and cons, you know? Yeah. Obviously, in theater, you craft a role and you develop the, the role and you put it up in front of a live audience and uh, anything can happen. But if you've done your homework, you always know how to respond when there's things that go haywire. Yeah, they both have their pros and cons. They're both fantastic. Yeah. You know? Have you been, have you uh, been on the theater stage much since those early years? Um, well, the one role that everybody uh, keeps telling me about that they love so much was um, I had a lot of fun doing it too, um, and it really the people who saw it really similar to the last dragon i get a really strong vibe from people uh there's a director that lives in, in new york city named timothy haskell and he had a concept of uh doing roadhouse patrick says film as a comedy but using the exact same script 
So I did a, a show years ago called uh, Roadhouse, starring Time Out, the star of The Last Track. <laughs> oh, man, I'm missing. <laughs> Playing it. Dalton. <laughs> so I played Dalton. If you, yeah, and, and the, it was packed every night. People loved it. You got to bring that back. <laughs> yeah, he's got to bring it back. He's <laughs> yeah. he finally. He's a director in New York City, and he does a uh, horror. Yeah, you find him on Facebook. H a s k e l l Timothy Haskell. Yeah, I'll talented tell him. guy. Talented I'll tell him he's get on it. <laughs> yeah, he's uh he's very good at that 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 genre. You know. So I wanted to ask specifically about uh, one of your appearances in another show I grew up on, which is a uh, WMAC Masters. Pretty wild show. Uh, was that was that shot? I think it was a shot at a uh, Universal Studios. I think. Um, oh yeah, I mean they did have it as a studio there, but uh, it's so I try to remember. It. You know, it was damn. I forgot what studio it was. I'm trying to remember if it was there. I don't. I can't remember if it was there. Or another one. Yeah, that was an interesting experience. You know, I didn't really mesh well with the producer, um, but the 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 idea was really, I think, good. Um, obviously, I didn't do a lot of episodes. I only did two. Right. Um, but it was it. But it was a. I think it was a good concept. Yeah, it was a very interesting show. Almost like a live action fighting game sort of deal yeah yeah i mean yeah i mean it was in the time right after or around the time of power rangers um i i just think that uh i don't know do they have anything like that now no not no that was it was pretty unique for the time i think that's why a lot of well, kids they, they did that film the hitman that was off the the video game the hitman yeah you know but yeah. they didn't. They haven't done anything like that TV wise. Yeah. No, can't say that I've seen it. So, out of all the projects you've worked on, whether it be you know film, stage, what have you, what would you say is the most challenging? Is there one that you lost sleep over? They're all challenging when the the role is requiring a lot of work. Most like that. I, I just I, I've had uh, some really bad bad uh, injuries with my spine, and. It's taken many years for me to get where I'm at now. I'm, I was having problems walking for years and, and um, yeah, these type of things. And I had my immune system got um, compromised. I ended up getting mercury poisoning. Damn. I just got rid of that. Rid of that. So it was like really fighting for my life. Um, so I'm improving now. I just have to continue to work on. I've got two amazing people I'm working with, I didn't want to get surgery because a lot of, a lot of times you'll never regret, you know, you'll be regretting it the rest of your life, spinal surgery. So um, I get these two guys that are really good. One's an acupuncturist, actually three, one in LA, one in New York. And um, the, another, and the best chiropractor I've ever been in my life, uh, Dr. Murphy in, in, in New Jersey. Anyway, they're working on getting my hamstring strength back and my, grip strength so you know i have to be continue to be patient and continue to uh, trust that i'll get a full recovery you know i've come a long way with it and um, i alluded to that because two years ago i was offered a, a bad guy role in a small black gorilla called double cross on the all black network and i prayed about it i'm not super religious but i believe in god and i prayed and i said listen if you, I don't feel good. I didn't even know I had mercury poisoning. Uh, I, I didn't even, I didn't feel good at all, but someone said, okay, do it. So I did it and I enjoyed it. The, the company, uh, they were like a family company and, and they, they were really cool. They were really cool. And the writer, um, Chantel Gibson, uh, was a very good writer, her brother Howard. They were just great. And uh, they asked me to come back and we did it in the summer of last year. And uh, yeah, it's on the All Black Network, a, a streaming service, and it's called Double Cross. I, yeah, I, was, I wasn't doing too well. I was a little skinny, but you it, did it. It, the, I was happy. I, you know, it was very challenging because you asked me what, 
what was most challenging that 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 was really challenging because it was uh wasn't feeling well right <laughs> well i hope you're doing a lot better now man that's a lot a lot to yeah do. i just have to get the physical strength back that's all a little calm i have to be patient continue to be patient best acting advice you've been given and who gave it to you best acting advice mm -hmm. you know it's interesting because there's so much advice over the years uh the, i think the the best is to get out of your head what's great about acting is that you always have someone in general you always have another character to work with you know so if you if you're not listening, you're able to listen and respond rather than stay in your head and, and, and act, you yeah? know? Right. So that's the best advice is to get out of your head and work with what's in front of you. And this is a question I like to ask everyone just because you never know. Uh, have you ever had an experience you would consider supernatural or paranormal? Yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> uh oh, let's hear it, if you don't mind sharing. Well, it's, 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 man. Okay. So I was um, going through a lot with this girl and I just couldn't make it work. And even though we loved each other a lot and this was about 20 or more years ago. And my friend who Damien, he was the director of a, a film called 3000 miles of Graceland. And he was a struggling filmmaker and he ended up doing a seminar called Landmark Education. And it's like a in-person group thing and you, you let go of your hangups and you create new possibilities for yourself in the future and you give up these old ways of being that are blind spots. And so I was struggling in that course uh, with her and eventually the... The, the coach was like reamed in on me and I felt horrible. Uh, he embarrassed me in front of everybody. And I was really basically in blame, you know, it was, you know, her, she's the one I'm not the, that kind of vibe. And I was so, you know, how do you say, um, I had so much armor protecting, protecting, you know, and it wasn't letting anybody in. So I was after I, you know, I was going every, you come back like every night, I mean, every morning, you leave at night. So I was going back to the car in the parking lot, and my girlfriend was following me, and about eight to ten people just came over and hugged me, and, and it was the most amazing experience. It's really uh, felt loved, you know. And the next day, you, when we go up there, you share what, just a very short phrase of what you discovered about yourself, like um, I'm not good enough or whatever blind spot it may have been for you. Mine was everything was okay. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. Um, and then you, right after you say, I, you know, I give up that, I'm going to create something else um, as a possibility. I'm walking up there getting ready to say, but I couldn't think I would, what I would create as a possibility. And um, when, uh, yeah, so the coach goes, he goes, if anybody doesn't know what to say, is there a possibility? Don't worry about it. Just when you're up there, look in the eyes of everybody that went through these four rough days that you came in together with. Yeah, just look in their eyes and it'll come to you. So I go up on stage. I say, the act I'm giving up is everything up is okay. And, and then... Uh, right above in the back of the room where the ceiling and the, the wall meet, the crack right up there, uh, there was a, a long bar of charcoal smoke going waving back and forth. And I'm looking up at it completely. I'm, I'm still in the room. I'm still conscious of what's happening. But I was with everybody looking at it and I was about to scream fire. There's a fire, everybody, because I thought the smoke was coming from the wall. Well, as soon as I was about to scream fire, the wall, the wall went like this and it cracked open, very small opening. 
and all this electrical sound was all through the room. At that point, it was such a profound supernatural experience. I was so fixed, fixated on it that nothing, I couldn't see anything else. I became, it was myopic, I was just tunnel vision. And um, it slowly started to open up. As it slowly opened up, I was looking to see what was there and it was uh, just sky. And I was just like, the sound was very electrical in the room. And it was, in a way it was very scary, but in the other way, I felt safe. So as it slowly opened up, I was looking for what, what was up, what was out there, and I saw things shooting left and right, way, way off in the distance. And then I felt like the sun was coming into the room, <laughs> like not the heat, but the energy. Yeah. And as it came into the room, you know, my mother says, "Definitely God." <laughs> uh, I I saw this powerful hand, big powerful hand, come into the room pull back like this. As it pulled back, as soon as it was pulling back, I said, oh God, that, it's like an arrow. And I was right. And an arrow shot from that, that crack all the way towards me. And it, as it came through the room, it, I could see now sh dark shadows of the, the people in the, in the seats. And like it was coming through like gel, like liquid green gel. And as it came towards me, head in my chest, and I said, the possibility of love. And everybody jumped up in the air and everybody was clapping and happy. And um, I never really talked about it much at all until many, many years later, it was a pandemic. Uh, but it was very profound and very obviously surreal. Uh, and it gave me a sense of, uh, I didn't really put it together. I was too much in my head, you know? Right. Uh, you know, how relationships work and how things work like this and, and why do bad things happen to good people, all these things. But it all makes sense now. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was really phenomenal. Really phenomenal. So in real time, how long would you say that experience lasted? Oh, God. It, I don't know, but... Uh, I don't. I don't think anybody. Nobody saw it but me. I mean, I, I never asked anybody if they saw. I mean, in fact, my ex girlfriend. She goes. She she said uh, she doesn't know. She's looking at. She she was out of it. Um, she doesn't. She doesn't remember exactly that moment. Right. Um, but yeah, I I can't say. In my mind, I'm thinking it. I don't know about three minutes. In fact. Three beautiful white feathers fell into the room when that crack happened. These big, beautiful white feathers came into the room and fell on the floor. Yeah, it was really, that was really beautiful. Um, so I'd say about 30 seconds to a minute. I, I mean, I, I, I mean, you can't, yeah. What, what do you attribute that to? I know you just said earlier you're not super religious, but if you had to throw a dart at the wall, what, what would you say it is? Well, um, I feel God wanted to, to, you know, me to get that message, and um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that was the point, right? I mean, yeah, I can't think of any other reason why, you know, and this is uh, received. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you know, basically uh, being able to. You know, it's like you can forgive people and you could forgive yourself. Um, but it's like you still know that you need to have your boundaries, you know. Right. So it, it's like love, love is, is, you know, is there and love is always here. So it's we, we know what what's too much. You know, like the, all these different things that are going on in the world now, wars and the side, they've always known, right? In the past and stuff. And it's a product of, of human, you know, mankind. Uh, and to elevate beyond it, 
is to elevate beyond um, the 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 technical, all the things that we want to say is real for us. Yeah, it's very real, but how much of that you're going to let go to create create some levity? Because how you you can't to, you you need to learn how to create levity because the heaviness is just heavy. Yeah. If you're able, if you're able to create levity and 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 just understand that there's a there's a mystery to to it all, you know, then you can organize some harmony and some you know some working things through and working things out, you know, and yeah. and and that and people kind of lose faith in that because it's we're heavy into our thing, you know. And and it's it's understandable because people have died and and there's all kinds of things that happen. It's hard to get over, you know. Right. And I know uh, just a few minutes ago you've been going through some some physical issues, but do you still train at all? Yeah, that's the thing. I wasn't able to train many years. And I lost a lot of muscle, so it's been the big, the hardest thing. You know, I mean, I wasn't able to work and really doing autograph signings and appearances what was able to pay pay my bills for different therapies um it, it's not easy it's just it's not easy at all i can't lie but um i know there's a reason and that's that's my main focus is to get better and better and better and 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 know how i can it, it can make me a better a better person a better man and a better uh, friend, family member, and everything else, you know, better actor. Well yeah. said. So just got a couple more here for you, man. When, uh, when you go around in public, how often <laughs> since the movie was released, do people ask you who's the master? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, people walk in New York, everybody's like, well, true, true, true. Um, but when people, when someone does recognize me, it's very intense. Yeah. <laughs> And they, they just, you know, it's like, it's crazy. So, and I get, when I get it, it's so, I'm so used to it, especially since I've done a lot of appearances now, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's really, it's a warm feeling because people, it's a good vibe, you know, so I'm very, very, yeah, I have, I'm, it's easy to have fun and, and, you know, with people and stuff. Yeah. Right. And I do, uh, I do cameos and, the, the you know when you look yeah. into the camera uh, yeah so the people always asking me a lot of fun things to you know say to the person they got the cameo for so yeah i'm used to it <laughs> yeah well ty mock just to put a bow on this here and i'll let you go what what's on the horizon for you is there anything you can share or tell us about well i'm meeting with my agent next week and that's what we're going to be focusing on now that i'm feeling you know, really great health wise and I'm developing the strength. Um, not ready to jo jump and throw flying kicks yet, but um, I'm ready to start rock and roll and do some more roles. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, I will keep you posted. My Instagram is I am time. I A M T A I M A K. I am time. I mean, I'm sorry. At uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, I post all the time when I've got something in the mix. You know? Awesome. Well, we'll keep our eye on that, man. And I just want to thank you again for giving me some of your time. Big fan and had a great time chatting with you. Thank you. I like your, your Southern accent. Thank you. I'm South Carolina. There you go, man. <laughs> keep, keep, you got a good voice. Keep it up, man. Thank you, man. You have a great rest of your day. Cheers, Justin. Cheers. Bye-bye, man.